minimal privacy, extra long twin beds, socks on the doorknob. Other than the lack of gravity, this space bunk doesn't seem all that different from a first dorm back on Earth. But this sketch goes back way farther than freshman year. It's all about embryonic development, specifically the development of three germ layers and the key tissues they give rise to. But first, a quick review of everything leading up to the differentiation of the germ layers. During embryonic development, a zygote begins as a single cell, but rapidly starts undergoing mitosis, first becoming a solid multicellular mass and then hollowing out into a ball called a blastula. Invagination of the blastula draws the outer epithelial cells inward, which marks the start of gastrulation. At this point, the cells in the gastrula start turning into three distinct layers, the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm, which ultimately give rise to all the tissues in the adult body. These three bunk beds represent those three germ layers. Let's check them out one by one. Eh, nothing like a good space flicks binge to kill time between galaxies. Now, he may be at the end of his episode, but that the end on the screen is also an indication that this bunk represents the endoderm. The endoderm is the innermost germ cell layer in the developing embryo. The endoderm gives rise to most of the hollow internal organs, including all of the organs in the gastrointestinal tract. Think every organ food, like these snacks, would pass between your mouth and Uranus. Or, wait, no. Uh, for once, we're not talking about the planet. We really, truly mean your anus. <laughs> anyway, endodermal cells are the ones that find themselves on the inside of the gastrula after invagination. These cells form a tube. That tube continues to grow until it eventually passes all the way through the organism, forming a primitive gut with openings on either side. Those openings become the mouth and the anus, and the tube ultimately differentiates into all of the digestive organs in between, plus associated organs like the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. But the endoderm isn't just about digestion. Might seem like this guy drew the short straw pulling the bunk right next to the urinal, but that urinal is there because the endoderm also forms most of the bladder as well as the urethra. I guess it is pretty convenient when you've had one too many bevies before bedtime. And this guy's learned that if you keep a couple of extra oxygen tanks nearby, you don't have to worry about inhaling any lingering odors. Plus, those lung-shaped tanks symbolize the lungs, another organ derived from the endoderm. Now, I don't have one of those tanks, and the mingling sense of space cheese and cosmic urinal cakes isn't doing much to help my motion sickness. Let's move up a level. Ooh, oof. this gal's certainly not winning any prizes for tidiness. But her messy bunk should make you think of the mesoderm. And it's in the middle because the mesoderm is the middle germ layer. The mesoderm forms all the skeletal muscles and connective tissues in the body. Which explains why this gal is so swole. I gotta ask her about her regimen. Anyway, that's not all when it comes to the mesoderm. Her interesting skull decor should make you think of the skeleton, another mesoderm derivative. Plus, there's the kidneys, represented by that kidney-shaped pillow behind her. Ah, uh, look at those two lovebirds. That heart-shaped photo is more than a reminder of vacation with her earth bow. It also symbolizes the heart, and all the blood and vasculature that goes along with it. They all come from the mesoderm. And those aren't ordinary palm trees, they're chock full of scroca nuts. <laughs> yeah, you heard that correctly. Those hairy scrotum-shaped scroconuts are our recurring symbol for the gonads, both male and female. And in this case, they are there to remind you that the sex organs are also derived from the mesoderm. And on that note, I'm gonna derive myself up to the third and final bunk. This Ectosuit 2000 represents the latest and greatest in spacesuit technology. It symbolizes the ectoderm. And similar to how a spacesuit is the outermost layer of an astronaut's wardrobe, the ectoderm is the outermost germ layer in an embryo. Oh boy, he is very comfortable. Okay, so he may be showing quite a bit of skin, but that represents one of the major ectoderm derivatives, the skin. 
Eh, at least he's covering up a little. The sunglasses and noise-canceling headphones don't just help him ignore all the uncomfortable looks from his roommates. They should make you think of the eyes and ears, key sensory organs that are largely ectodermal in origin. You see, after gastrulation, the ectoderm goes on to form the neural tube and neural crest, which give rise to the brain, spinal cord, and all peripheral nerves, including those associated with the senses. Now, I'm getting the sense that tension is uh, rising between these roommates, so let's review. During gastrulation, a single epithelial layer of cells invaginates and differentiates into three distinct germ layers the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. The endoderm is the innermost layer. It forms the digestive tract and associated organs, as well as the bladder and respiratory system. The mesoderm is the middle layer. All skeletal muscles, bones, and connective tissues come from the mesoderm, as do the heart, blood, and blood vessels. The mesoderm also forms the kidneys and gonads. Finally, the ectoderm is the outermost germ layer. It differentiates into the skin and all neural tissues. Now, I would hope that astronaut is at least wearing a zero-g string, but I'm not going to stick around to find out. Catch you later.